Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to the Daily Dose. I'm myself, Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I'm a cardiologist and I'm also the mentor for teaching general medicine for exams like NEET PG, AIMS, PGA, and as well as JICMA. So as a part of today's Daily Dose, let me just give you a clinical scenario. So I have a 78 year old woman and she's admitted to your ward following a three day history of shortness of breath and productive cough of white frothy sputum. On auscultation of the lungs, you hear bilateral basal coarse inspiratory crackles and you suspect that the patient is in congestive cardiac failure and you have requested a chest x-ray. Which of the following signs is not the typically seen on the chest x-ray in patients with a congestive heart failure? The options are lower lobe diversion, cardiomegaly, pleural effusion, alveolar edema, curly B lines. So basically, this particular video is on the chest x-ray findings in patients with the heart failure. So you should know that in patients with the heart failure, there is increase in the left ventricular end diastolic pressure. So what is that? Let me explain you. So you take this as your four chambered heart. So in this four chambered heart, the heart failure in the sense, right? The left ventricle has failed. So thereby, what will happen to your left ventricular end diastolic pressure? Left ventricular end diastolic pressure increases. Why? Because when left ventricular failure is there, when left ventricle contracts, it is unable to empty the entire blood into the iota. So, your left ventricular end systolic volume increases. When your left ventricular end systolic volume increases, to this particular end systolic volume, your left atria will empty. Thereby, what will happen to the pressure at the end of the diastole in the left ventricle? It increases. Left ventricular end diastolic pressure increases. Ultimately, the pressure within the left atria also increases. And ultimately, the pressure within the pulmonary veins increases, right? So what I want to tell you here is, in the chest x-ray finding in patients with the heart failure, you will have the features of pulmonary venous hypertension. So that is a basic point that you should remember. So whenever there is increase in the pulmonary venous pressure, that will further increase your pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Thereby, what will be the consequence event? Let me tell you. Right. So, first of all, you should know what will be the signs of pulmonary venous hypertension. And that is what you see in the chest x-ray of a patient with a congestive heart failure. So, in early stages, when there is pulmonary venous hypertension, you will notice the presence of the upper lobe venous distension. Right. You will notice the presence of upper lobe venous distension. So, that's a very important point. Right? Next. Now, as the pressure further increases, what will happen is, from the increase in pulmonary venous pressure, there will be further backflow, there is increase in the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. So, when there is increase in the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, the fluid from the pulmonary capillaries will enter into the interstitium. Right? Will enter into the interstitium. So, once they enter into the interstitium, that will give you the chest x-ray finding of the curly B lines, right? That will give you the chest x-ray finding that is called curly B lines. That is what you will have in case of interstitial edema. So interstitial edema, chest x-ray finding is you will have the presence of curly B lines. Then as the pressure further increases, the fluid from interstitium will enter into the alveoli and that will result in alveolar edema. So when there is alveolar edema, what will be the chest x-ray finding? You will have the presence of the airspace opacities. You will have perihilar backwing distribution. And the, this particular alveolar edema, it completely gets cleared with one dose of your loop diuretic. Right? So this completely clears with the diuretics. And this we call it as actually a flash pulmonary edema. Which, what is the flash pulmonary edema? It is the one which will disappear with a dose of a diuretic. That too you will need to give a loop diuretic which is a high ceiling diuretic. Now, what is the next thing? From the alveoli, the fluid will try to enter into the pleural space resulting in what is called the pleural effusion. 
and you should know in the chest x-ray the earliest sign of pleural effusion is blunting of the costophrenic angle right blunting of the costophrenic angle this is the earliest sign of the pleural effusion and not only that you will also see the presence of a curve that is called as ellis s shaped curve right this is called ellis s shaped curve and this is also called meniscus sign right this is also called meniscus sign so that you will have in the very late later stages of your heart failure so remember in chest x ray of a patient with the heart failure you will have bilateral pleural effusion you can have curly d lines you can have alveolar edema but you will not have lower lobe diversions what you will have is upper lobe diversions that is due to pulmonary venous hypertension so going back to the question right so you will not have lower lobe diversion what is the question asked which is not the typical sign on the chest x ray you will not have lower lobe diversion so that is the answer to this particular question so this particular video was completely related to the chest x ray findings in patients with a congestive heart failure right so i hope like you might have liked this particular short video so please follow us on the daily dose wherein i'll give you a daily updates thank you very much